Hi, and welcome to Two Wheels, and welcome to the International Motorcycle Show from Birmingham. So it's not just motorcycles you see at motorcycle shows like this. There are other things, lots of accessories, helmets, boots, gloves, all those sorts of things. And I saw all sorts, and I'm going to share it with you later. And it's not just the very latest brand new machines here either. There's older bikes as well. Suzuki GSXR 750 from 1985, one of the very first models. In fact, the very first model. There's also quite a few one-off specials and there are even people who have won awards. They're jumping up and down celebrating, as Claire has been finding out over at Yamaha. So Andy, you look a happy chap, no doubt. <laughs> we're absolutely delighted. Obviously we've won the Motorcycle News Awards and we're here for the first day of the Motorcycle Show, so it's, uh, yeah. Fair to say you cleaned up, didn't you? Five awards you won actually, didn't you? Five and two of them from the same as last year, so we've got the 98 and 99 awards. So, so it's the R1 won two, the R6, the Phaser, Phaser and the Trials Bike. Trials Bike, yeah, absolutely delighted. We went there thinking maybe two, but actually at the end we got five, which was really over the moon. Absolutely fantastic. Well, phenomenal success with the R1. You didn't change anything with the R1 last year, but this year quite a few little changes. No, I mean, the R1 set the new standard in super sports, and then we, we work on a policy of two years maximum, then we have to change, <coughs> excuse me, for the super sport. And this year the R1 comes through with 250 changes, which is just all those little, little incidental yeah, things. Subtle that, changes. Yes. Not Obvious. What have you done? Um, we've made it lighter, we've made it sharper, and I think R1 customers of today will notice the difference when they ride the 2000 model, and that's the most important thing. So is every existing R1 customer going to want to rush out and update their bike? Not just existing, we hope a lot more other customers as well. I mean, we have four, five thousand R1 owners already out on the road who are very happy with their machine, and this is just the next stage because the R1 is a long-term development and we're really pleased with the uh, 2000 model. Any, different in, any difference in power? Performance is about the same, but you just get a different feel because we've changed the, the power band, so there's a lot more lower-end power, and therefore top end is, stays the same, but, but the lower end is, is a lot better than so mid-range. it's predominantly handling? Handling is definitely sharper. Um, it, as I say, it's already lighter, and um, I think customers will see those subtle differences. Apart from the subtle changes to the R1, what have you got here that's new? All new, we've got five models, but probably the key one is the slider moped. So we've gone from the Super Sport Ultimate R1 to the slider moped. I saw that on the way and it's a cool looking little monster, it's, that, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's what they call as the, the new urban concept, which is uh, taking everything down to basics. Yeah. And it's designed really for people to have fun on, yeah. uh, on two wheels. I suppose the market for that is your young, trendy... Excuse me, yeah, moped really appeals to all age groups because obviously you can ride that on a car license, but this one probably is, is targeted more towards the 16 to 19 year olds where they say this push bike and this is the next step up. You've got all kinds of kits you can add onto those as well, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I think there's something like a thousand different parts you can add and personalise your scooter, which is all about fashion. And, and people of 16 to 19 really want to make their machine something different to the one that's already available in the, in the showroom. And that's, that, they can now do that, so it, that, that's perfect. Yeah, some funky colours as well. Yeah, you can, <laughs> the, the colour choice is up, entirely up to you. But we're really looking forward to, to the reaction we've had so far is so, so positive in Europe. Yeah. I think it's an excellent lane, it's a slider. It's Slide. brilliant, absolutely brilliant name. <coughs> yeah, it's, it's probably not to the insurance companies, but, but actually for the, <laughs> for, for the riders, then you can actually get the feel of the machine. BMW have got something to shout about this year because they've won an award with their new 1150GS. They've won Machine of the Year in the trail bike or trail style machine from the Motorcycle Press. And here's one, the new 1150GS looks quite like the old 1100GS. And in fact, from the sort of tank backwards, it is exactly the same. The seat's the same. It's got the same two-piece seat. You can set that off, strap your luggage on there so you don't have to be lumbered carrying a pillion. Big differences on this, obviously up 50cc, so power's up a little bit. We're now about 85 brake horsepower. The old 1100 was round about 80. Gearbox is different on this. We've now got six speeds. In fact, they don't really call it gear six, they call it overdrive. I don't know why that is, but it's great touring bike, this, and one of the best handling trail style bikes I've ever ridden, I have to say. Big differences at the front end in the aesthetics, which is this. Um, adjustable windscreen on this now the old one had an adjustable screen but what it did the whole thing moved backwards and forwards which changed the angle of that against your body now slacking a couple of things off there and the screen actually moves up and down you can adjust it independently 
It's still got this uh, rather strange looking uh, double mudguard sort of thing here. Uh, this is bigger now, it's supposed to be more efficient, it's actually wider than before. And I still think it looks like a beak. I've always called this the bike with the beak. And if you don't believe me, just have a look at the yellow one behind me. Well, this is it, Triumph's new 600, the TT 600, a four-cylinder 600 at that, and it's not part of the modular range of Triumphs. Got the Daytona with its three-cylinder engine, the 1200 Trophy with an extra cylinder nailed on, but this one is completely new. And not only that, it's got digital EFI fuel injection, which is another first on a 600. And it's got a rev limiter on it as well, which is a very clever one. It's a soft rev limiter, so instead of cutting the engine dead when you hit the old red line at 14,000, it just cuts a cylinder at a time and nicely eases it up. Power-wise, 108 brake horsepower, which is in the same ballpark as the um, R6 and the ZX6R and the CBR. Weight-wise, too, 170 kilos. That's in the same ballpark. So this is going to be a very competitive bike in the 600cc class. Well, that was a quick technical overview, but there is a man that I want to have a word with, Bruno Tagliaferri from Triumph. Bruno, can you tell me just how important this bike is to Triumph? Well, it's an, ex it's an extension of our model range. We're in a position now where we've outgrown ourselves at the current factory. Um, we're moving on to a new site. Phase one is already completed. Uh, and the new factory has the capacity to, to, to double production. So what we've done is we've identified a key sector of the markets. And uh, we, we've, we've developed here a model that will act as their entry sports bike. And it's a very competitive market, 600cc. I mean, you've chosen the best or the worst, whichever way you could have gone to, to hit that one. So uh, how are you pricing the bike? Well, it is extremely competitive, and one of the four critical factors is price. We look at power, weight, styling, and price. Um, we're actually uh, going to launch the bike at about six and a half thousand pounds, including VAT, which is actually in the ballpark of all the major players. Yeah, so that will be competitive from from day one. And what about availability? How soon can uh, we see these? When are they going to be in the showroom? Production should start late, late Feb, early March. So, you know, we've, we've got a network of over 60 dealers in the UK. But the nice thing is the first ones will all be designated demonstrators at dealers. So the public have a, a real opportunity to go in and test ride it. Kawasaki KX, famous for their KXs, the Green Mina. It's their off-road motocross machines. Now, this little baby is only 100cc, and this is for the boys. And dads, they get the big ones, the 250s and 500s. But for the boys, there are some smaller ones, which suits me. I'll just show you this little baby over here, the KX80. And Kawasaki have introduced a new model, this little one here, a 65. 65cc, it's a new category that's been introduced in the year 2000. And what it is, if you're six year old now, and you want to fancy having a go at the big time motocross, you have to ride a 60cc. But if you can become seven in the year 2000, you can buy one of these, a 65cc, until you're 10, then you get something bigger. Now, what I want to point out, it's a beautiful machine. There's two points. It is not a toy for Christmas. Oh, no, no. Two reasons for that is because it is a frighteningly quick machine and you have to be experienced to ride one, yeah? And the other point being is, it is 1,875 quid. So you'd have to say, but really hard to buy one. But nonetheless, a beautiful machine, and if you want to win, when you're seven years old, this is the sort of thing you'll need. This is the Runner, one of Gilera's top selling scooters. While looking at this funky little beast, it's easy to see how scooters have evolved over the last couple of years. But I bet you wouldn't think that this has got exactly the same engine in it. It's basically a scooter dressed up as a motorbike, and doesn't it look fantastic? It's a Rev and Go which means it's going to be exciting news for all 17-year-olds out there and scooter riders. It's going to go on sale early next year. It's going to be in 50cc, 125 and 180cc, and it's going to come in around £2,000. Knox. Knox, yes, the thing you do when you fall off, you knock yourself. Knox body armour and back protectors. These things have been on the market for quite a while and these are market leader in the way of back protectors. But they've introduced a new one. Fancy stuff. And the great thing about this particular one is you can roll it up and they give you a bum bag and you can stick it around your waist. So when you're not on your bike, you don't have to wear the thing or carry it under your arm like that. Not a bad idea. All right, but Knox are famous for this sort of thing, which is actual body protection kits. 
and you buy a kit and it gives you some of this stuff which goes in the elbows and the shoulders. Now they've been famous for doing this stuff for a long, long time and people like Frank Thomas and Speedy and Bellstaff and many, many more use this in their kit when you buy it. And you can now buy an add-on kit. So if you haven't got it and you've got a pocket within your jacket, you can put this stuff in. But they also do this sort of thing as well, over here. Excuse me, mate, how's things with you then, all right? Not got a lot to say for himself, has he? And this is a Kevlar type jacket. The whole thing is produced out of Shula material, this stretchy stuff that is extraordinary abrasive resilient, with a few trimmings on as well to make it look smart. Clever stuff, very protective, no leather for those of you who don't wish to wear leather. Now then, what Knox have decided they'll do is invite us down to their factory to see how they produce the stuff and how they test the stuff. And that's what we're going to do in the future. Here's a machine making its world premiere at the show here, a Sax 125. Never been seen before, and if you talk to the guys on the stand here, they'll tell you it's never been ridden before. Well, not strictly true. There's one or two very lucky people have been out on it, and I'm one of them. I've actually ridden this. It's a smashing little thing. Sax is the name that you may remember from the past. I'm far too young to remember the heydays of Sax, but they were famous for making their engines. In fact, they were really the Rotax of yesteryear, where lots of different manufacturers use Rotax engines now. People used to build bikes and used to stick Sax engines in them. So it's quite bizarre, really, that Sax have now made the bike, but it's not a Sax engine. It's a Yamaha TZR 125 engine, two-stroke engine, and it goes like mad. Really very, very, very quick for a little 125. Handles superbly well, brakes well, single disc front, single disc rear, adjustable monoshock suspension. Really, it's got everything that your big bikes have got, apart from the power, of course. £3,750 on the road is the price for this, and I reckon it could be every little boy racer's dream. And coming up on two wheels after the break, more from this year's International Bike Show, including CCM's world launch of their new roadster, the 640 RS, a brand new model from Aprilia, and BMW's rather odd-looking 125, the C1. Also the restyled and all-new Honda Fireblade. <laughs> Roll up, roll up, let's show you something new then, eh? eh? It's like a market stall. What we've got here is some new luggage by a company called Vanessa. And it is in actual fact produced by a lady called Vanessa. Now she don't knock it up on her sewing machine, it's factory produced. But Vanessa is the Christian name of the lady who produces this in Italy. Now there's a rarity, because a lot of soft luggage is in fact made in the Far East. It may have a different brand name on it, and very funky brand names, but most of it is indeed made in the Far East. Not that's a bad thing, no, not really. But when it comes to quality, in soft luggage, the Italians know how to do it. Now take, for example, this baby. Looks like a regular tank bag. Well, it is, I suppose. It is a magnetic tank bag. But you can hide those magnetic pieces away underneath and tidy it up with the zip, and then you can put fasteners on here, and it can be a tank bag with straps or indeed a seat bag. Then, in addition to that, you open another aperture here and you pull out some straps and it becomes a rucksack. Very clever, isn't it, eh? Very technical. Good job there's instructions, I wouldn't know how to use it. It will reduce in size because it's got an expandable ring round it and you can buy that for around 70 quid. They also do this, which is indeed a rucksack. But also, it's got an extension pouch on it and you can put your crash helmet in there. And that's just over 40 pounds. So look out for it. It's actually under the brand Roadline. It will be available in the year 2000. And uh, in fact, I'm taking orders now. Do you like? Can I make an order for you? Now then, look at this British manufacturer here, CCM from Blackburn in Lancashire. You have to say Blackburn like that because that's how they speak. No offence, man. But CCM, yeah, I was stood on the CCM stand last year, as you may recall, and told you all about their new road bike, the 604R, which last year had a wooden seat. It did, honestly, it had a wooden seat. That was because they hadn't actually finished making it yet. But that is in production as I speak. The CCM have been even busier because now they've got this, the 640RS, which is a bit different. 640, so as the name suggests, bigger engine, actually 636 cc's, but still single cylinder Rotax motor. It's got nice fancy painted uh, plastic work. You can have it in silver, you can have it in red, or you can have it in black. And it's got nice fancy wheels as well. And they're calling this a roadster. They're not calling it a supermoto. It's got supermoto type lugs, but it's not quite as 
high off the ground as a supermoto would be, and it tends more to the roadside rather than the off-road side. So it's called a roadster. You can't have one till January, but when you get one in January, it's going to cost you about six and a half thousand pounds. It's common knowledge that scooter sales have gone through the roof in the last couple of years, but is this the way forward? The wacky C1. It's fantastic, isn't it? BMW are really going for promoting safety on this little vehicle. It's got a roll bar system, which in some countries you don't actually have to wear a helmet. You strap yourself in here and, uh, well, it's very comfortable, actually. There's loads of switches on the dash, loads of little gadgets, pockets. There's even a fantastic couple of set of speakers up here. It's a 125 little whiz and go. Is this going to be the ultimate for the scooter rider who doesn't want to get wet in traffic? Obviously, you're going to stay dry. It's got a windscreen wiper over the top. Well, it remains to be seen whether these become trendy on the streets of London or not, but at around just under £4,000, they might just be. The Aprilia RSV Mealy. We're all used to seeing this one on the road, but what you won't have seen is this. This still uses the RSV engine, but it's been retuned. 105 brake is against 112 brake. This is the new Falco. Sporty half bearing, very much like the VTR Honda, the Firestorm. A brand new frame using twin spars here. More as a cosmetic thing, I think. It's make, to make the bike look, you can see the engine, you can see the frame. It's a more physical bike. Same goes through to the exhaust at the back. Twin silencers as against that great big can on that one. But it's a nice bike. It'll cost you seven and a half thousand pounds. As always on the Carol Nash Insurance stand, there's some impressive machines, some glittering special machinery. So I want to show you this little baby here. I hope it's insured. Famous old American name, Indian. 1930 model. This four-cylinder, 1340cc, four-cylinder in line. Very neat. But just look at this. What have we got here? An Indian again, four cylinder in line. And look at that for a motor, 1.8 litres, this one, 1800cc. Massive front forks on it. The whole construction is massive. Swing arm rear, shaft drive, of course. But this is a real up to date Indian cruiser. It'll cost you £19,500, but it is available now and to order. Well, if you're talking Honda and you're talking performance, there's only one name that springs to mind, of course, a Fireblade. Been around, seems like it's been around for ages. And the man that knows more about the Fireblade than I think probably anyone is, is Dave Hancock, because you've been a development rider on this since before we ever saw it. Yeah, the first time I rode the bike was actually in uh, 1989, and right. um, that's 10 years ago now. Yeah. Um, since then, it's developed um, five times, actually, uh, from the first model. And now, in, um, for this year, for the year 2000, we've got a brand new, brand new machine. Well, it looks, it looks quite different, body works different. Yep. A bit more angular at the mm. front and things. The, but the whole thing, actually, is that there isn't one part from the old fire blade that's on the new one. The whole thing's totally yeah. new. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. Totally so new. how much better is it, then, as a man who um, knows it inside out? I think uh, the big differences are the weight, because um, mm. the weight and the power, actually, because, as I say, the old fire blade, or the current one, mm. um, has been along a long time, and, and we've, we've taken a few years to develop it, and, it's also taken the competitors about six years to catch us up, really. But yeah. uh, you're looking at 154 brake horsepower now with the new machine wow. and 170 kilograms. So the, the power to weight is, uh, is incredible, wow. really. Fantastic. So what will the man who jumps off his old blade and gets on this new one, what will he notice first of all? He'll Apart notice... from going, wow, it's fast. <laughs> He'll notice, actually, uh, straight away the weight. The weight is probably the most important right. thing. And also that uh, now it's got a lot more mid-range power and um, it just feels totally, totally new. Right. So 10 years now, well, since its development, 92, I think, came out, didn't it? 92 so was launched, yes. Seven yeah. years we've yeah. been used to seeing on the roads. Is it going to go on forever? Oh, I think it will do, <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll still keep developing it anyway. Look at that. That is certainly a showstopper. It's pretty incredible, isn't it? Built by a designer biker on his year off, he had another TL1000 engine. And look at those lines, and the colour is quite amazing. It's called Chrome Flare, and it's obviously very light reflective. Whether that is actually practical or rideable, is another matter, but I'm sure something like that would certainly sell. As you would expect a motorcycle show, there are loads of different helmets to look at. Some available now for you to buy, and some we've got to have an insight to for the future. And this is one. This won't be available to January of 2000, but it's rather nice, and that's why I want to show it you. Not only has it got this sexy finish on it, and it really is rather nice, but it's got good aerodynamic lines, plenty of air venting, it's got a detachable, washable liner, 
and a very quick release visor that is anti-fog as standard and that will sell in the year 2000 for less than 190 quid very very good value for money not only is that available but this and you might know if you've been watching the program and seen this on the shops it's been available for quite a while okay this is the vrs you can buy that for 154.95 now okay but what they will introduce in the year 2000 is an adapter kit that's the helmet that i've just shown you without the front piece on you put these side fittings and a lift up tinted visor and also you can get this peak fit in here all for 29.95 damn good value for money well you're always guaranteed to find nice things to look at at the bike show and very different things look at this never seen anything like this before two ladies sat on a higher busser with a difference it's a higher busser trike yes never seen one because there isn't another one this is the only one in the world it's been done by a company in cardiff the trike shop they specialize in this kind of thing but you could buy this for your hire busser. You could convert your hire busser into a trike. This kit will cost you about £5,000. That's without the wheels and without the lights. And it's dead easy to do, apparently. There's no major engineering work involved. It bolts straight on. It uses the standard swing arm mounts and the standard suspension mounts, so there's no major engineering work involved. And then you can turn it back into a standard hire busser, again, in about five hours, if you know what you're doing. Or you can go down to the shop and you can buy one exactly like this, ready-made, for 15 grand or you can buy this one which is for sale now it's second hand only just at 14 grand but it doesn't come with these two aboard That's all from Two Wheels at the NEC for this week, but there's lots more to come in next week's show, including Kawasaki's new 200 mile per hour rocket, the ZX-12. There's new models from Kajiva and Laverda, and from Honda, their new X-11, and their new world superbike contender, the SP-1.